He's the son of the late alderman and mayor, Eugene Sawyer, who steered Chicago through a turbulent time following Mayor Harold Washington's death in the late 80s. Roderick Sawyer is now in his father's old sixth ward seat, representing parts of middle-class Chatham and hard-up Englewood. He's a proud member of the City Council Progressive Caucus, who has voted against Mayor Rahm Emanuel more than a few times. I'm Mike Fouché, publisher of AlderTrack, and this is our Meet a Chicago Candidate series. So tell me, Alderman Sawyer, what keeps you doing this? Why do you stay as Alderman? Why do you want to keep doing this again? The easy reason is I love my community. I've been here. I was born and raised uh, a few blocks from where I live today. I love my neighbors. I love being around people that I've known all my life. And I want to help. I I see that we're going through a little bit of a troubled time. And I want to be there to help us guide us through a difficult period so that I can leave the area better than when I came. So do you consider yourself a Fioretti or Garcia or Willie Wilson supporter? Not an Emanuel supporter, I assume. No, but I, I, I see some characteristics in, in three of the challengers that I, I see that are, are attractive. Uh, obviously, Bob and I uh, click a lot on a lot of issues. We've been uh, brothers in arms, so to speak, on a lot of progressive causes. Uh, I'm aware of Willie Wilson's um, story. He's got a tremendous story to tell, rags to riches, uh, you know, going through from being sweeping up to owning McDonald's and now a medical supply company. And Commissioner Garcia also was, I remember him from uh, my younger days, uh, him being an alderman with my father and being a key deciding vote during the Washington administration. So they all have something to offer. So a proposed methadone clinic on 79th has raised the ire of a lot of your residents in Chatham uh, because it's so close to an elementary school. This is the situation, and and it was a lot of misinformation uh, throughout the Internet. That methadone clinic has been there for some years now. It didn't just get there. It's been there at least as long as I've been in office. Uh, The gentleman also that owns the methadone clinic has purchased the building. He owns the building. Now, the concern is, one, the methadone clinic being there. The second scenario is that we have a drug problem on 79th Street. People were complaining. We had a meeting recently that I, I tried to, I called because quite honestly, we weren't getting the support from the community organizations that I thought I was going to get. I had asked the community organizations to convene a meeting previously. Uh, They held a protest, but there was no follow-up. So I felt it was incumbent upon me to do some follow-up because it is an important quality of life issue. The fact that the methadone clinic is there and has been there, um, you know, it, it serves the public good, but there have been people hanging around the methadone clinic, and that's been the problem. Not the the clients that go into the methadone clinic to get treatment and go about their way, hopefully to go to work and be productive citizens, the ones that are trying to abuse the system, uh, use it for their own personal means to get high, mm-hmm. uh, that's, those are people that we have to respond to and have to deal with, mm-hmm. and we have to deal with them sternly. Mm-hmm. So I felt it would be uh, important for the community and the owners to be in one room so we can find out best practices so we can, uh, as someone stated in the meeting, make sure that uh, you don't know that the clinic is there. So what's the best place for a methadone clinic? Where do you, where do you put a place like that? I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, I, I looked it up, and there are clinics throughout the city of Chicago. That I counted 39 clinics in all areas, in the Gold Coast, in Lincoln Park, West Loop, South Loop, all areas of the community, south and west and north sides. So, I mean, if you want to put it in an industrial area, that's fine. But I didn't want, it's a state license, not a city license. I did not choose for the methadone clinic to be there. Let's be clear about that. It was there when I got in office. Now that it's there, I think what we need to do is try to work with them so that we can quell the unnecessary traffic or we can do something uh, along with my colleagues in the state rep- state legislator, state legislature to do something about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's where we need to go and that's the direction we need to take. And we did the first step by having the meeting, getting the owners and the residents in one room so that they can air their differences, and they had agreed to put together a task force so that we can talk about, again, best practices so that we can deal with the fact that it's here and they own the building and it looks like they're not going anywhere. So uh, you've got a pretty big ward issue going on with that. If there was... Well, the, the problem that, that, you know, again, the Internet trolls are, are, are making it a bigger issue than it is. It's an important issue. Uh-huh. Not to say that it's not important. It's very important. Okay. Um, but they're, they're confusing the methadone issue with the heroin addiction issue. Uh-huh. I mean, a lot of people are talking about needles and, and, and people being high on the street. 
those aren't methadone clinics. One, methadone is a liquid. It's not a drug that you take interven intravenously. You know, you don't use needles for methadone. You, you drink it, and you have to drink it there in front of the administrator, and you can't leave without it, so, uh, leave out, out of the room with it, rather. So I think they're confusing the issues. And right now, especially around election time, people are confusing issues for their own personal benefit. Uh, we're trying to get a problem solved. You know, I'm not, this is not an election issue. This is an everyday quality of life issue that's important to my residents, and we need to resolve it. So setting that aside, mm -hmm. if you had one major policy issue that you'd want to achieve or something you'd want to tackle in the next term, what would it be? The, the major issue as it relates to my community is economic development. Um, you know, that's why we have people that feel that they can purchase a building and put a methadone clinic in the area if there's no alternate viable alternatives in the area. And that's been decades of, of neglect. I mean, this is something that I walked into and I, quite honestly, I'm, I'm willing to take the charge on this. I'm not placing blame on anyone, but this is something that I, I have to fix. And I'm trying to fix that by encouraging development down our corridors, down 79th Street, down State Street, down 75th Street, down Halsted. Uh, we, we have to revitalize our areas because, one, we're not collecting any tax revenues. We're always complaining that we don't have the revenue to do this. We don't have the revenue to do that. Because why? We're not investing in our communities. We're not putting money in so that I can buy things which generate sales tax revenue, which is what the city works on. When I go by the L-stop and I can't even buy a newspaper, that's a problem. You know, I, I'm not contributing anything to the community, uh, uh, to the economy, rather, uh, by not being able to spend my money. When I have 7,000 people on each one of my L-stops every day and not be able to get in their pocket to spend a little money for goods and services, which generates tax dollars. We generate tax dollars, we generate revenue. Generate revenue, we generate jobs. We generate jobs, we reduce unemployment. You know, all this catapults on us being able to have viable economic corridors in our community, and we're not having that right now, but that's my uh, challenge for the next term. Okay. Well, thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. You can learn more about the Rod Sawyer campaign and 183 others by subscribing to our email newsletter at aldertrack.com, by listening to the series on Rivet Radio, or by subscribing to the series on YouTube. Thank you very much. More great stuff to come.